Hello and welcome back to Creative Video Strike. In today's episode, I'm gonna talk about constraints in Figma. I chose the topic because it's quite important to understand how elements placed inside a frame that make up a layout and the design of a mobile app or a web page react when you're gonna resize the parent frame. Uh, oftentimes, you're gonna work on a default size. Let's say you start with the laptop screen size and the programmer or the manager comes and says okay it's nice but how would this work in full hd uh, resolution yeah like 1920 by uh, 1080 or on a tablet view size the thing is if you are hitting correct and think a bit uh, before starting working on that layout on your elements is gonna be way easier and you're gonna avoid having to go in and do a lot of manual work when you need to show them. The first thing we're gonna look at is basic frame. Yeah, it's completely empty at the size of 280 by 280. On the right side I have a simple shape, a circle, an ellipse, and this one is 80 by 80 and then I have an, another frame, I called it nested frame. Each element, as you can see, lives on the canvas and the constraints don't display. They should appear somewhere here on the right. Well, as soon as I take, let's say, the first element and drop it into the parent frame, you can see that now it manifests its constraints here on the right side. I have this quick access widget from which I can basically set how it behaves on the horizontal and vertical axis. There are several properties. Uh, you can also access them from the select options. And by default, every element should recognize the left edge on the horizontal axis and the top edge on the vertical axis. What does that mean? Well, that means if I resize this frame, my element is gonna stay position relative from the top and the left edge. Okay, let's try now also to drop this uh, other frame. And I'm doing this demo because Figma documentation mentions it also works with uh, nested frames. And this one, I can try to position it. Yeah, let's try right and bottom. I resize. And those blue lines, guys, over here, they indicate that, okay? Okay, I've got some other examples. Depending on how you're gonna set them up, they will react differently. Okay, let's try to enlarge those. And you can see I have another one, position right top, then one that is left and bottom, right and bottom. Then I have an element centered, okay? So this circle over here is positioned on the center, horizontal and vertical. What does that mean? Well, whenever I resize the parent frame, it will stay centered. Now, there's a key shortcut if you want to resize the frame and ignore the constraints. And that's control on Windows or command on your Mac. I can try to do that. Again, we're gonna have scale. This works slightly different. I have again the parent frame and then inside I have a circle which is a child of that frame. The circle is 80 by 80 and then the parent 280 by 280. Let's say that I'm gonna set the child to scale just like I have it here yeah, on horizontal and vertical and then when I move to the parent right adding here let's say 140 which is 50 percent of 280 well my circle resized and of course it also resized with 50 percent of its original size it was 80 pixels if you add 40 pixels now you get 120 by 120. now let's move on and if you want to Take this one step further and experiment. You can try to do those frames, call them the faces of a dice yeah, with numbers from one to six, each represented by the number of circles that appears. If I will try to resize those, let's say I'm gonna go to 360 by 360. You can see they will stay in place and they will respect the edges, yeah, the, the margins of the, parent frame so 
again it comes down to you uh, experimenting a bit and getting a feel on how those react an example closer to ui design web design because i think that's what's uh interesting for you i have a uh, label and then i have a shape this blue rectangle with border radius they don't manifest any constraints yeah because they're just elements on the canvas one on top of each other i will select both of them duplicate and you know i don't need a frame i can just convert them to a component hitting this shortcut button up here now i have this component well what i want when it resizes i want the label yeah to stay in the center so i should try to make it stay center just like that so now it seems that it works yeah my my label order now stays in the center well, one thing here I need to mention that if you change it to a longer uh, text, like subscribe to the channel, it won't be centered anymore. So I would have to select them and center it from here. That's not exactly smart. So um, how about we make it properly from the very beginning? And I'm gonna do that just by over here centering the text. I'm gonna center. Let's try again. I'm gonna try now to the channel. You can see guys, now it stays centered. Okay, there are multiple ways to achieve that. Now let's try to also work on the search uh, bar. If I would group them and try to resize, kill them, they, they won't react that nice uh, or as I would expect. So I'm just gonna create another component and I need to yeah, set the left and top for the search label. Same for the uh, text placeholder. Now for the button, let's try to go with it right and also try to go with it top. Okay, now when you resize that component, you will see that it behaves as, as expected and why did i do that because imagine you can have multiple instances of this component of the search bar and one can be as large as the search you have on amazon and uh, another one can be maybe a search bar that sits somewhere in the side column of your website so we're just gonna move now to the main example a mock-up yeah, for a pet shop what do i see well i see that i have the top uh, navigation bar the main nav and over there i have a logo nav link item the, the actual nav bar the main content area with the staging or hero section and the main title and a couple of cards over here at the bottom the, the footer okay I would like this when I resize yet yeah, to stay with the parent frame because now it's at uh, 1440 by 1024 and I might need to go with it in a full HD version soon. Well, first of all, let's uh, try to attack the large elements and I'll start with the nav bar and I'll try to set it on the horizontal to scale and I don't want it to scale on the vertical I, I just want it to uh, stay at the top so now after I test it works as expected then the nav links well they should stay to the right again yeah, with the right edge that works fine yeah and the logo is okay the logo actually should be left and top okay again another easy one to, to do so the footer on the horizontal axis i want it to scale and on the vertical axis i want it to stick to the bottom and like that my footer starts to respect the parent container okay let's see the main content and over here have inside that uh, this frame staging area and then those elements 
the actual container but this one when I resize the frame I want it to go down and left and right to keep the margin okay so I'll say um, left and right keep the margins and look what happens yeah. now it will stay on the on the left and right so that's okay and I also wanted to keep the top and bottom I wanted also the distance from the top okay so again if you don't get it right from the beginning because it happens to me to you don't need to memorize and yeah keep keep in mind all of the combinations you can just test okay let's we'll go and try to work with the staging area to mind for the left and right okay okay and the staging area is basically another frame in which i dropped uh, an image okay and the main title i would put this to to scale both on the horizontal and on the vertical okay so the bounding box of the text it will scale so look what's gonna happen it went on to rows because i allowed it to, to scale on the vertical otherwise yeah if i wouldn't allow it to, to scale on the vertical uh, and I would just put it center and center well, it won't go on to lights yeah. uh, I'm glad we managed to wrap up with this example I think if you're gonna practice uh, and leverage these properties you're gonna get more familiar with responsive designs in future episodes we're gonna look at auto layout and our Cool things we can do with components and uh, layouts all together break points so uh, stay tuned and do subscribe to the channel I wish you the best guys